our freedom. Good evening, good evening, Lord, and we welcome to Conversations with Gary. They are not prepared for. My king, the Europeans wish to conquer us. They will not stop until the whole of Africa is theirs. We must fight back for our people. Time is come. You are asking me to take them to war. War. Some things are worth fighting for. Don't know. Join the King's Guard. No kingdom in all of Africa shares this privilege. Train hard, fight harder. We fear no one. And we fear no pain. I offer you a choice. Fight or we die. All right, all right, all right, all right. Good evening and welcome to Conversations with Carolyn. And that was the trailer from The Woman King, starring Viola Davis. And I want to say good evening, and I trust that many of you have had the opportunity to go see Woman King. And if you haven't, put it on your list. Or, or perhaps from the conversation on tonight, you can weigh it in, see if that's something you want to do, or if it's something you just want to linger. Uh, it's a powerful, powerful movie with a phenomenal movement in it. So I want to say good evening, and I want you to invite your friends, tag someone, let someone know that Conversations with Carolyn it's on the air. That's right. We are showing tonight. And we just want to have a conversation. We want to have a conversation about the movie Woman King because it's such the it's such a buzz right now. There are many um, clusters of questions, many clusters of statements, movements about Woman King. So I want you to uh, join in. I want you to feel free to chime in, post, engage, and make sure you let someone know that it's on the air. Let someone know that we are here. We want to hear from you. We, it's just all about the conversation about the woman king. I want to say hello. And if you're out there, if you're listening, drop me a chat, drop me um, a heart, a like or something. Let me know that you're out there. I will give, um, give people a few more minutes to chime in. And once again, if you're out there, I want you to make sure that your day has been just totally, totally, totally wonderful. Today has been a satiating day for you. And it is Wednesday and it's a wonderful Wednesday. And fall is, it's what it's my favorite time. One of my most favorite seasons. I like the, the breeze. I like the, to see the leaves change colors and things of that nature. Um, so I trust that today has been a really, really good day for you. And I wanted to just kind of bring to the forefront today a conversation about the woman king. And um, how many of you have actually seen the woman king? If you have seen the woman king, drop in the chat, I have, or me, or uh, a heart, or just a, um, a power fist, whatever you want to do, drop it in the chat if you have actually seen the movie Woman King. That's right. If you're seeing the movie Woman King, let us know that you have actually seen the movie. Um, and drop me some likes, drop me some hearts. Hi, Free. It's always good to see you chime in. And we are really here today. We're going to have a conversation about the Woman King. That's right. So, if you've already seen The Woman King, you want to see that movie. It is really, really one of the must-sees 
um, and I'm trusting that after this conversation that people will be able to gauge a decision to go see the woman king. I myself, I had some reservations and I'll talk about those reservations prior to going to see the woman king, but I am so glad that I did. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad that I did. So I'm just kind of giving people a few moments to come in. Um, and if you're out there tonight and you want to join the conversation, join the conversation. If you've seen the Woman King, let us know you have seen the Woman King. If you're not, like Free says, she want to see the movie. If you have anticipation of going, um, just let us know. And once again, one thing about the conversation tonight. We're going to be talking about some messages. Um, hi, Sarah. Hey, Yolanda. Good to see you. Hey, girl, looks like you had a wonderful trip there. So glad to see you watching. And we just want to have a conversation tonight about the woman king. And I would like to say that the, the disclaimer is that this is not a a woman king movie on bashing. It's not a woman king movie on um highlighting it's not a woman king telling you that these are the facts but this is a conversation and i want you to be able to have a conversation about the movie if you've had an opportunity to see it if you've had an opportunity to see the trailer and all of that great stuff so i uh, i'm really i'm trying to wait and give some people time to come in we do know that the woman king was a, it's a movie and it's starring Viola Davis. And Viola Davis is such a phenomenal actress. Oh my gosh, she is totally superb. And in this movie, you see the dynamics of her array of acting skills. And it's not so much of the acting skills, but you also get an opportunity to see her energy just truly engage. Elder William Sims, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And I do, I want to encourage you to tag your men friends, tag your guy friend. This is just not a woman's conversation because there are a couple of things I want to bring out that are totally, totally specific to both men and women. And it will be a true benefit for the men and women of melanin, most definitely. Um, I will say that I had my reservations about going to see the woman king, because as I, as many times you, you, you really kind of get uh, tired and get that lame feeling of having all of our uh, black actresses and actors act and be in movies and they don't get the word a lot. And when I realized that, okay, there were uh, white producers of the, of the woman King, um, I was like, okay, I really want to make sure that our story is told correctly. I wanted, wanted to know, I had those reservations. So I knew that I wouldn't be able to fully have a scope of, about the movie until I went to the movie to see it myself. No hearsay, no she say, he say. And I tell you, that was one of the most pivotal decisions that I made that I'm glad that I did. And one thing about Viola Davis, from her very first stance, her very first position, the very first words that came out of her mouth, they were powerful. And it made your skin crawl because how many times do you remember that feeling when you felt most powerful? Or how many times have you wanted to, you, you've admired people and you want, oh man, I want to captivate and I want to have that courage and confidence. Well, one thing about Viola Davis in The Woman King, from the very first moment she made her appearance on that screen, you felt powerful. You felt her energies. It was so electric. You felt the momentum of embracing the reality of who we really are from that moment. And there were so many areas and scenes in this movie that you wanted to cry, you wanted to laugh, and you wanted to embrace all of the feelings that Viola Davis and, and um, John Bagoga, all of them was able to resonate here. Hi, Andrea, glad you're here, glad you're watching. So I, I really want to, as I said, I want a disclaimer and I said, we want to have a conversation. I want, for those of you who have seen The Woman King, drop in the chat, I have, or me, 
or a hand or a heart. If you've seen the woman king, drop in the chat that you actually have. If you're anticipating on going to see it, feel free to do so at, at the time. But one thing about the woman king, starring Viola Davis, it, it's a movie about the homie tribe. And this Dahomey tribe is a was a tribe of women warriors. Now, one thing about this particular movie, I wanted to assure that even though it was made, it, it was starring us. And one thing I do want to say there was uh, that it was directed by a black woman. So we're glad to uh, to um know that and we could see the, the the way that the african integrity was given in this movie you could tell that some great passion had been put into it some real um moments of authenticity uh because the director that actually directed um woman king she also directed love and basketball so uh it, it felt good to know that there were a lot of women, people of melanin that was able to get in behind the scenes to make this movie as authentic as it was or as it is. And uh, one thing about the Dahomey tribe, this was a tribe that existed that portrayed women warriors who gave up everything about their womanhood to be a warrior. And General Naniska, she was the general to the king, Michaela, uh, um, which was John Bacoya at this time. And she was the general, but she also operated with authority and with a power. And Dr. James Small, he is uh, Professor James Small. Uh, he said it best. Um, and if you have an opportunity, go and look up Professor James Small. He has a documentary. He has a briefing on on this particular um, this particular movie, and he said it best. And I want to know what your feelings are about this. But he said it best when he said that women have always been the power of the world from the very first beginning. Women have always had the authority that that. The Dahomey tried it. There's no anomaly about this that this woman became king because kings resonated, women kings resonated all down through history. And women have the power, but the authority is given to the men. So, uh, what are your thoughts about that? Those are words from Professor James Small. But one thing about the movie is that when it started, it, it came on and it talked about and it showed us how Naomi, um, how um, Viola Davis, General Naniska, how she was ready and she had, she gave the proclamation for us to think about, are you ready to fight or are you ready to die? There's a, there's a difference. Are you ready to fight or are you ready to die? And Today, I, I want to put this out here that today, even today, that there is there are women that are in power. Uh, there's a, a, a woman king and she and is King Dambi. She's a woman king of the order of the leopards and gamba. So there is nothing new under the sun. But what we have to remember is how will we facilitate and resonate that power? One thing about the movie, it stressed a lot about women and women in power. But I don't, one of the messages I wanted to bring out is that out of all the victor, that women, that the men themselves are not uh, negated from the power of who we are. Men are not negated from the power of resonating in our very own communities. Hey, son, Jabari, good to see you watching. So in the movie, it comes on and it it comes on with this great empowerment of Viola Davis, of General Naniska, who's leading these women through battle. And it, it shows how the women were able to conquer the village. But if we back up, back up just a little bit at the at the beginning, you will also see where the man of melanin 
the the men of the Ogobes, they were actually having a counterpart. Hey, Ty. Hey, kids. Hey, Tyler. It's good to see you. I'm glad y'all here. But they were there. And what they were doing, he was having a conversation with the European slave owner. And what that, what the, here's the other message I wanted to bring out was as that man of melanin, that uh, general, that uh, king general of the Agobe tribe was having that particular meeting. The meeting was a meeting about selling slaves to the European slave trade. That's right. The black man was selling slaves to the European slave trade. Now, that did something to me. It set me aback because I'm like, wow. You know, we spend a lot of time blaming others in its own perspective scopes about the situation of our people. But for four, on back 400 years or so, we have to recognize that we were our, we could have been products of our own worst enemy. So in this movie, this is one of the very first, one of the uh, messages that I saw that really shook me again, even though I've read it in history and I've, I've, I've done the, the research to know that the African uh, villages, the, they did sell slaves to the European slave trade. And in this movie, it showed where the Agobes were savaging. I mean, going through the villages, killing everybody but the women and children, but the children, and selling them into slavery, getting money, getting, well, back then it wasn't current money, as we see it today, but it was the, the resources. It was the, the diamonds, the oils, the, the rubies, all the, 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 the crops. On they were, they were trading that for literal bodies. And think about it today, as we spend a lot of our time chasing down others for our own demise. How many of us are in situations, has been in a situation, know of a situation, in that situation today, and we call them so-called sellouts, or we call them people who will take a bribe or take a few dollars, take a couple of thousand, take $10,000 or so, but at the same time, still not stand up for the welfare of the whole melanin community, sell out or a little bit. And this is what I saw in the movie. And it, what it resonated in me is that we have to be careful of how we see things and how we dissect it. Because as dynamic, as dynamic as Viola and the rest of the cast was in this movie, we still have to look at what is being presented and perpetrated to us in our very own eyes. And at the same time, it gives us an, an opportunity to stop. It gives us an opportunity to think. Am I a product of the sellout? Am I a product of selling who we are to the oppressor? Am I a product? And we do it to our own selves. Uh, a lot of times people call it black on black crime. A lot of time uh, you, you get go through, uh, and I've heard it said more than one time. I've heard it said, boy, I tell you, I don't know, fooling with us black people in business, they don't do the shady, they this, they that. Well, once again, it goes back to 400 years or so, so ago. And that DNA just triplicates. It, that DNA keeps on coming through, coming through. And until we get to the point to where we decide we have to be the course to change the dynamics. We have to be the curse breakers. We have to be the releasers. And that is one of the messages I saw in the Woman King that I wanted. I, I'm like, wow, well, I want it. Is it just me? So that's why I wanted to have this conversation to see what are your thoughts? If you've seen the Woman King, what are your thoughts? And then even going on a little bit further, um, in, in the Woman King, we saw where the women were empowered. The women were, were uh, executing a lot of the power. And 
we still don't have to look at that and say that men are minimized or men are that their their car who they are as men and standing in our community is no more or they can't do it or they uh they're not worthy this was once again a setup to keep us divided this is once again an opportunity for us to think oh we, i got it like this oh i don't need a man i don't need this I, I i i got this and i'm all powerful i'm all knowing i got my jobs by six figures i got my own uh thing going i got my own mind my own creativity but how many of you know that we need each other man and woman uh however that relationship is whether it's man and man woman and woman whatever that relationship is we need each other and in the movie the woman king you saw you could see where the the congregate the the people that were who, who were part of the warrior tribes and when they decided that they were going to join this warrior tribe and be a part of this warrior tribe, realize what all they had to give up. You could see in the movie, the dynamics of how the emotions riddled through each other, how the emotions began to subside with each one of those women resonating through throughout in the, the, the homie tribe of warriors. And so it's real important for us to understand, and this is my take uh, 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 from that. And one of the messages that I got from that is that however we see each other, we cannot divide each other. That a whole, a whole tribe of women were there. And then you had the, the women who were married, the, the women that were wives of the king and, and the, the, homie, the homie women, they were everybody was wives of the king who had their different orders. So one thing that, the, that this movie depicted was how women, if, not, if it's not carefully orchestrated, can be part of, of the, um, what do you call it? Uh, the good word, pull it, the jealousy, the scribes, because you have you have the different levels of wives to the king. And by the time you, the the there was almost destruction within the 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 actual the homie tribe and the village and all that with the king and his wives, because the the jealousy mode had set in. And one of the things I wanted to uh, get from that is that we as women, melanin women, must give up the mode of levels, the mode of jealousy, the mode of this, because we are stronger together. And in the movie, you will see how all of this play out. And I, I, I'm seeing that uh, a lot of people, I'm not getting a lot of people that have seen it. So I don't want any spoilers, but I do want you all to know that we cannot negate our men because they are very, very powerful. Hey, sis, good to see you, Shirley. But we cannot negate our men. And once again, what's put on the screen, what, what is given to us out of all this greatness that these women are showing, the women cannot do it alone this is hollywood and so and although it was taken from a true story some parts were taken from a true stories and true events the fictional part and those those subliminal messages we women we cannot do it without our men and if you can remember and i'm not a, i'm not an advocate not an advocate by long shot of men sleeping with multiple women but if you can remember back back you can't remember but i'm saying with the history uh, our men were taken from the slave plantations going to other plantations pregnating the women of other plantations for the product of seed and labor and this is what they did all throughout those years of slavery taking our men and they call them our mandingos and the the big sturdy men the big uh fine men take them and they would
go to not just impregnate one woman, but many women of different plantations. They would have more children and have more labor, made more money for the oppressors than the Europeans. So when that became a part of that man's DNA, he didn't know how to separate that from the emotion of who we are as his black queens. And move fast forward. I remember um, President uh, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, everybody called him the black man's president, the black president or whatever. While he playing his saxophones and serenading around our people, he was backhandedly, he was the one who wrote into law uh, of the bills about the child support and, and imprisoning our men for not paying child support and blah, 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 blah. We know white men, Europeans, everybody have child support, but the main brunt of people, the population that has been affected by that system have been our men of melanin. So once again, when you see this movie, you have to be careful of all of those subliminal messages to make us think that we as women got it all, we got it like that, and we don't need our men. Yes, we do. And one thing about it uh, for our men, I wanted our men to understand that in this movie, you will see where even though out of all the uh, the brazenness, out of all of I'm king and I'm this, when that when, when General Naniska had to make a a final and be, very very powerful decision, when she made that decision, she had to go against what the king had ordered. When she, hey, up Ira, when she made that decision going against what the king had ordered, it, it could have cost the entire village. It could have cost everything. Uh, Jabari says, right, we have to use discernment when we view and observe anything, even when it comes to movies. Absolutely, absolutely. Because one thing about movies always have a hidden agenda. It always have uh, a subliminal message. There's always something going on that they're not saying, but they, they're saying it, but they're saying it indirectly. And so with this movie getting so many raves and so many views, and it is a great movie. I the 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 choreography, the costumes, the acting, the movie itself is dynamic. I mean, there were times that I was yeah, yeah, yay, and times that I was I was crying and wiping tears. But most importantly, there were times when I was thinking and there were times when my husband uh, was in the movie with me. And there were times I was able to reach over and grab my husband's hand and say, I'm glad I have my man of melon. I'm glad I have my king with me. And so, you know, there are times that we have to really, really understand that what we see on screen, although it's Hollywood, there's still something more to what we see. And when we begin to break it all down, when we begin to peel off the layers, we will begin to see there's much more to us together than there is divided. So I am, as I said, I'm not an advocate of men, of women being used by men and men being used by women. I am not an advocate of that at all, but I am an advocate of, of us taking a moment to see what can we do individually so that we can matter collectively? What can we do individually so that we can be able to rise again? Do you think we will ever be able to rise again? Because the Dahomey tribe itself, when you really look at what the Dahomey tribe was about, it was about everything that we believe in. The Dahomey tribe, they were literally um, going through. Now, the movie had it looking really, really, uh, really nice because they were able to uh, capture and 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 annihilate that particular village that they were fighting against. And it happened to be uh, men warriors. But those men were also 
black African American men. And there's also, we're going to talk a little bit about that at another time. We're, we're black and black and black. And actually, there's a word Asiatic, and that's something you might want to look up Asiatic, that is really the term for who we are. But that's on another date. But one thing about with that tribe, they were black and they were literally killing other black people. The ones that they weren't killing, they were capturing, enslaving them, selling them to the European slave trader. So, you know, once again, there, there's some things that we really want to take from this particular movie that, you know, to think about is that we work better together than we are apart. Even at the end of the movie, when um, General Naniska, Viola Davis, had to make that gut-wrenching decision, she made it. And that decision, ultimately, any other time, would have disqualified her for becoming king, would have disqualified her from even for forgiveness from the king because she had ultimately disobeyed the king. But the message behind that was there comes a time in our lives when everything about who we are, everything about what we believe in, everything about what we know that we can no longer fear will move mountains. What we no longer fear, I mean, I mean that 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 gut-wrenching thing, because there are times when you know, man, I, this is not the right thing to do. You know, uh, I probably should be doing something else. And you know, oh, that's just absolutely wrong. Or you know, you know. I really need to be doing, this is not going to help that person or this, this entity, this situation. But because a person of power have given you a directive, because a system has given you a regulation, there are times that sometimes we have to really think beyond the popular, the powerful, and look at what's the truth. And we will never get to the truth if we don't face the truth and move all fear and have that confidence of going with those gut riching decisions. And in the movie, you will see how General Naniska, Viola Davis, went with that gut riching decision. And it was ultimately a powerful decision and it was that decision and how she carried out that decision made her qualifiable to be the king at a time when she thought she was about to be uh she thought she was about to be um perhaps beheaded or killed or 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 punished for what she had done Nevertheless, she would have thought that she would have been honored king, and she was. So with that message, what is it that you are holding on to that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt with everything that's in your inner gut, this is the right thing to do? It may not be the popular thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. It's a season that you can no longer refuse. The woman king, absolutely phenomenal. And as I forestated, we look at the Dahomey tribe of what, what they were presenting, but there were many, many tribes like that. And, and basically, um, from the words of uh, Professor James Small, that's how we ended up being African-Americans because we were sold from Africa to the Americans and we were sold by our own people. Once we were, then of course it became more and more lucrative and then it became uh, more Europeans 
who were actually enslaving. And that's what we began to see in the history books. You didn't see a lot of that unless you dove deeply and did some real research that you be, that you were able to see that it, the African tribes, villages actually sold each other. So what are you doing today that will contribute you to being a sellout? What will what what is it? And with that, I ask you to think about how will you make a change from being a part of the sellout to being a part of the revolution, being a part of the res the resolve that can make anything. We have to stop selling each other out. That's right, Jabari. You're right. We have to. And you know where the very first part that we have to start sell, stop selling out? It's in our very own homes, in our very own families. We cannot be any good to a community if you're not good in your home. And in the movie, you will be able to see Oh, one of the most startling positions was when the actual um, general from the Agobe tribe, from the from the um, uh, re, uh, from their rival tribe, had actually years and years and years ago had a performing an atrocity act on General Naniska. And this was 20 some odd years ago. And she had traumatized that. She was so traumatized that she had hidden that and didn't deal with it. And that came back to surface in the movie. Yes, it did. And I don't want to tell so much because I see a lot of people hadn't. Uh, Jabari says, if other nations can come together, we can too. The ultimate goal is to unite with all parties that are willing, willing to come to the fore, come together, no matter the nation, as long as the heart for pure unity is the goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I don't know if many of you have run across this, but, um, Unchecked character leaves holes that don't make us whole. Ooh, that's good, Jabari. That's good. Unchecked character leaves holes that don't make us whole. So when will you check yourself? When was the last time you checked yourself? When was the last time you had to go against um, the popular or the man or the system to help your brother or your sister? And I don't mean in your home. I mean in your community. But in the movie, General Aniska, she had to come face to face with a traumatic experience that happened. And a lot of times, things that are channeling out in our lives are things that are happening because we have deep trauma that, we, that has set in and we haven't dealt with. Deep trauma that we just we, we we decided you know what I'm, I'm i'm gone on i'm through with that i'm moving on but until you literally deal with it find a resolve in your spirit so that at from that point the real energy can come through and god can truly bless you in a state to where if any of that comes back you get it but in the movie Viola Davis, General Naniska, she had to deal with it. And, and when she dealt with it, she was able to slay it. So the other message in that for me was whatever you need to deal with, whatever you need to check, as Jabari said, don't leave it unchecked, whatever it is, when have you taken the moment to truly assess it? to see where you can start having some momentum, some momentum for movement. There's so much I can, there's so much I can just go on and on and on and on about the movie. Um, but like I said, I'm having a conversation. These are just my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Um, what do you think? You know, I, I, I think it's important 
that we remember that there's there, there are there's so much to us and the main thing is that we can't let others tell our story we can't let others depict who we are and we cannot let others divide us from being a whole people and i asked a question uh earlier do you think we will ever or do you think we can ever come up and come together and your answer tells a lot about where we are in this matrix um a lot of times we get so comfortable with with all of the materialistic european treasure of who we are that we don't really be we're not really able to embrace and hug and and love on who we really are without the materialistic stuff without the drama without the titles without without and i mean the society titles not our inherited titles because see we are are, are we 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 are from a lineage of of wonderful kings queens emperors and empresses but you have to remember not everybody was a king not everybody was an emperor not everybody was an empress you have to remember just uh, you you hear that all oh, kin folks ain't skin folks ain't your kin folks you have to remember that everybody didn't come from a king family or a queen family so they had to depend on the villagers so uh, when the Dahomeys are depicted as as, as such an, a, a wonderful group of people they were just as atrocious so when will you divide the spoil when will you come to the reckoning i cannot any longer become a part of the sellout but i have to be a part of the revolution i have to be a part of the resolve to make sure that our people can come up together again jabari said will everyone do it no but more than what we've seen can evolve into a greater community and I truly, truly, um, I can concur with you on that, Jabari. I do believe that there is room. There is room for us to be able to come to the masses of the love that we are. And if everybody could take an individual assessment, and if everybody can start individually doing something, then it will collectively energize. We may not have to come together in a big group, but it will individually, collectively come together. And one thing about it, hey, Marilyn, glad you're out there. One thing about it that um, that with uh, Professor James Smalls, he was the successor to Malcolm X Law, and he, uh, he, he talked about how important it was that because the messenger was gone the message had to still go on and a lot of times people systems will try to annihilate the messenger but the message res resonates deep down in the core of who we are and if everybody keep being a component of the message we won't have to have one great leader that they can swipe out and wipe out all of our everything that we worked for. But if each and every one of us can resonate with a, with a message, if each and every one of us can activate the message, if each and every one of us could compile the strength, the confidence, and the beauty of who we are, our message will energize, electrify, and it will attribute to a collaborative and collective end. And people will say, oh, what's happening? Who, who's the leader? No, the leader is you and everybody is the leader. And we therefore, there won't be a target for everybody trying to, oh, we got a, a, a they got Martin Luther King, they got Malcolm X, they, you know, uh, who's next? I mean, there's no reason. There's no reason that we cannot continue the message messengers might be gone but we are the message so in the woman king in the woman king and 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 as i said this is 
as phenomenal as the movie is, as from the beginning of the movie, when Viola Davis stands in the stance of General Naniska, and as she begins to speak her very first utterance, the power just resonates throughout the theater. And what that does, it, 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 encapsulates into your soul and it's from that very moment that you are at the edge of your seat embracing the message and once again the message is not what you see there there's so many different riddles to what you see on the screen we cannot be divided we cannot allow us to think that we don't need each other we don't need our men. We as powerful as we are, as, as in empowering as we become, out of all of that, we need our men. We need our women. We need our relationships. We need our unions. And whatever it is that you can do to make the message stronger, that's what you do. Uh, Joe says he hasn't seen the movie, he hasn't watched it yet, but we'll watch it tonight. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Yes, Marilyn, it is good. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for that. And I say it's good because I feel good about being able to be a piece of the platform, being able to be a piece of the message. And every piece of the puzzle brings that mural, brings it all together. So I just encourage each and every one of you to be a piece of the message. I encourage each and every one of you to be confident as you be a piece of the message. There is no more time. And one thing about this entire movie that I want to bring to the forefront is no more fear. No more fear. There, even in the great escape of General Naniska, of Viola Davis having to confront that the child that she had to give up being um, at, taken advantage of by the very man she had to kill, she, was, she did it unafraid. She did it with so much poise, dignity, and integrity. So I say to you tonight, for every situation, for every encounter, for everything that you have to do, do it with integrity, do it with confidence, and do it with no fear. I'm coming to you tonight. I'm coming to you having put away a lot of my fears, having to put a lot, I put away a lot of my restraint because see if i went by the messenger a messenger told me i never would have made it a messenger told me i wasn't worth the salt on the ground a messenger but my message was even stronger because the message was i am more than enough the message was you have had it from the very first moment you were born. The message was, it's all in your DNA. So what's in your DNA that's going to help you bring the message? Hey, honey bun, glad you're watching. I know you've been back there, but hey, thanks, it's glad you're watching. What's in your DNA that's going to help you be a part of the message? Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Marilyn. Marilyn, say, now that's a word. And see, I, I, I just want everyone to be non-judgmental. We got a lot of people talking about the movie King, talking about, oh, it's a degradation to black men. Oh, it's a sellout because white people are telling our story. Um, it's all about that. All of that, all of it could have some parts of it that are true, just like the movie itself. Not everything in the movie is true, but it was off of true events that actually happened. And once again, if you look at the research of the Dahomey tribe, we don't want to be a part of that. Of that. We want to be a part of the braveness and the courage that Viola Davis personified. We don't want to be a part of the sellout and giving our oppressors 
everything about our melanin people selling out right and today we don't sell slaves but we sell emotions we sell uh, uh valuable pieces of who we are we sell uh we sell out for opinions and for this and for that a democrat a republican sell out for uh elitism you know your six figure your four figure you sell out for the home you live in for the car you drive you sell out for we can no longer be a part of that i i i see uh, my classmates on here and i have to say this you know when we were celebrating at our class reunion uh we, it came down to we were having a really good time and we were we decided to, we were getting on the floor and we were getting on the floor dancing during our, and it's called the greek stroll but it was uh, the deltas me and my delta sarah's were on the floor uh my my classmate aka was on the floor uh my con uh my fraternity brother omega psi five they were on the floor sigma phi beta sigma they were on the floor and alpha phi alpha they were on the floor and we were having a good time it was called the delta i mean the greek stroll but that's what it's all about it wasn't that the the deltas thought they were so much they couldn't get on the floor with the akas it wasn't the akas oh the deltas on the floor i can't get on it wasn't the sigma say who are they think they are it was but it was all of us together and we were strolling having a good time huh. side note that's why i have a, a sore knee right now i got a brace on it but i'll be all right <laughs> but i said that even in its humor i said that this is how we must stroll in life we must come together knowing without fear we cannot let anyone tear us apart you have, if you haven't seen uh, Woman King, go and see it. I encourage you. I'm not mandating you. I'm just saying I suggest you go and see it. The Woman King has a lot of messages, a lot of uh, messages I was able to bring to the forefront, just something for us to think about. But the main thing I want us to take away from the Woman, Woman King is with all its power, it's all the glory, even with the grit, we are powerful together not just individually. So let us continue to work together. Embrace your partner. Embrace your uh, man. Embrace your woman. Embrace each other. And now is the time that I want us to start dissecting what generations of systems have told us who we were. Generations of systems have told us who we were, and we can no longer abide by that. We must come to the truth of who we are and the truth of who we are is so much more than the eyes can see. That's why they're trying to keep everything out, out of the history books. That's why they're trying to keep stop um, uh, uh, moving forward because we are the originating power source. Just know that. Just know that. And before I get out of here, I want to say uh, to uh, Candace Carter, uh, if you see my beautiful earrings, I, I just love them. Candace, Candace Carter, Carter, her daughter, Haley, she's 15, and she started making the earrings. So we supported her. So um, Candace Carter, she is, um, she's in the Helena area. I think their store is the Carter's Way. But her she did ship, no problem. Beautiful earrings. So uh, check out Candace Carter page. Her daughter's name is Haley. And they, I mean, just beautiful earrings, and I'm really enjoying wearing them tonight. Thanks, Joe Willie. Said awesome message. Enjoyed the messenger. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. We are all in this together. But yes, please go see the Woman King if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you can't get an opportunity at any time, if there's a conversation you want to have, drop it in my chat. If there's something you want to talk about, put it in my inbox. And we'll make sure we get an opportunity to have that conversation. Well, you know, it's time to get out of here. I've held you a little bit longer than we normally do. You know the words of Maya Angelou. I always say it. If you're always trying to be normal, you will never know just how amazing you can be. That's right. Let's all go be amazing. Join me next Wednesday at 6.30. We will be back. More conversations. And don't forget, check out my website, 
www.chanceofalifetimecoaching.com www.chanceofalifetimecoaching.com Hit my cash app. It's cash app. Dollar sign Carolyn M. Jones. Dollar sign Carolyn M. Jones. If you're so led, drop me a cash app. We appreciate it. We're going to keep this thing moving. Good night. Have a good one. And we will see you next time.